Welcome to part 5. Hard to believe it's been this long already, huh? Well, for part 5, let's be depressing. And that is, how rude people are toward the idea of mentors and mentorship. This is sort of a continuation of the idea of nobody deserving a reward for their work and time. As I said in the last episode, how many people do you really think such a high bar attracted? This and many other reasons has led many to immediately assume anyone with a crown is somehow evil. Generalizing like this is dumb, but it's a very widespread idea. Mentors are a target to hate, and they deserve it, and should stop being one. They use insulting names and blow up even a small mistake into a big one. Need proof? My own comment section! One person, before I deleted their comment and blocked them, accused me of being a Nazi because I'm a mentor. And don't worry, Midgard did at one point have a Nazi mentor who was also a flat earther. I wish I was joking. And don't worry, it's probably worse than you're imagining. But if someone's going to come into my own comments to do that, don't worry, it still gets worse. The level of vitriol comes in many flavors, but the through line remains the same. Being a mentor is automatically a point of ridicule. Doesn't matter if the mentor is actually right in what they say, whether they perform the best in the party or anything, they're a mentor. And so they're worse by default. It's rude at the absolute best. This leads to a lot of weird double standards and self-fulfilling prophecy. Some people will turn off the crowns for fear of the ridicule, and given Mentor Roulette forces the crown on, they're not likely to take part. When your totally not made up source for bad Mentor stories has a good overlap of people who say you're not allowed to give anyone advice, why are you taking their word on Mentors? And on that same token, if you're not allowed to give advice or you're going to be banned, then what are Mentors supposed to do? We have to be silent or be banned, right? Yet somehow when a mentor stays silent, it's somehow their fault now and a bad mark on them. A lose-lose situation designed by the anti-mentor crowd. Some of the loudest voices are the dumbest, and yet they get taken at their word. For those of us with a couple of brain cells to spare, we know that giving advice will not get you banned. A lot of people will still just not do it, and on some level, I can't blame them. I'm going to just keep using this picture, but this remains relevant always. This was unreal content, extreme level content, where doing your basic rotation correctly isn't optional anymore. This was their response after we had already wiped to enrage. Generally speaking, there are four types of reactions to advice. Vocal positive, silent positive, silent negative, and this one is vocal negative. You can plot most reactions on a 2D graph with the axes being vocality and whether it was positive or negative. Any situation where advice is taken, I mark as a win. When advice is refused, negative. What the true spread of all reactions are, I can't claim to know. The sentiment I tend to see people have is most reception to advice is negative. When the player base broadly says advice is met with hostility, when people experience hostility for being a mentor, what do you expect to happen? They can't exist without attack, then giving help while hiding mentorship still leads to being attacked. So we get all the good mentors staying silent because they're not even going to attempt to help unless they have a guarantee of safety. They're going to prioritize their enjoyment, their mental health. So through all your focus on the bad mentors and marking all mentors as a pariah, you prevent any of the good mentors you claim to want to encourage. They shut up and go into hiding. You spent all your time saying how this is bringing in only bad mentors, all mentors bad. You willingly ignored and shoved out any good ones. We're lucky that not all of them left because there definitely are plenty of good ones around. Mentors aren't immune to criticism, but there's rarely anything but. I know for damn sure that's not representative of the actual state of things. People only remember the negative. People only post about the negative, especially on social media these days. Negativity is encouraged. But maybe, just maybe, next time you should actually consider what you're saying about people. This intro is already getting long, so let's get to the main video. I'll continue next episode with mental performance and how people speak about that. The usual list of duties is here and I'll otherwise see you in the outro. Please do the rating, the comments, the subscribing, and all those cool links below. Come watch me stream!
All right, so today my neck hurts a lot. Well, not a lot, but that was actually Saturday and Sunday, and now it's Monday. So yeah, let's go astrologian. Oh no, I don't have a portrait. Oh no, time to make a portrait. Boom shakalaka. Maybe it's the shoes. Maybe it's going into mental roulette and hating myself. And, oh, it's, okay. Not surprising, honestly. Uh-oh. Ah. Uh, it took this long to get this, huh? So how much do you guys know how to do this? Uh, no pull timer, really? Yeah, this went bad very quickly. Oh. Well, we're waiting for another tank now. Waiting on tank. They just... Really? They just pulled without a word. They misunderstood what I meant when I typed in the chat one pull, as in because we only got one pull up to now, as one pull, as in they're just supposed to pull. No. <laughs> that is not what I was saying. Oh boy. Ramu is extremely simple on paper, but an execution can very easily ruin things. That is why he is the only extreme trial in a Realm Reborn I have not cleared with randoms. Even this group made a number of very major mistakes mechanics-wise that made healing this way harder than it should be. Damage is otherwise kind of controlled and minor. To explain how, let me explain the mechanics. For the entire fight, avoid the water when lightning is about to strike. It will shock the water and do damage. Spread out loosely so you don't hit each other with multiple AoEs. Every time lightning strikes, lightning orbs will spawn. These orbs are both good and terrible. The tanks must constantly keep on top of these. Grabbing three orbs will give you a buff that massively reduces damage. Picking up more than three will turn it into a debuff that stacks, making heals do less healing on you. To survive the tank busters, this is required. So whoever starts as off tank will run around, grab three orbs, then immediately provoke. When the tank's buff is dropping to about 15 seconds, other tank will then go grab three orbs and swap back in. This repeats for the entire fight. The tanks must constantly be swapping every minute. But the orbs don't end here. There are more orbs than the tanks need, and the more orbs on the field, the stronger Ramu is. Six orbs on the field is still barely livable, but any more than that and you're going to start getting one shot. This means everyone else has to try and collect orbs, but not over collect so as to not leave enough for the tanks. At the same time, every lightning strike will also have players get a target marker for hysteria. You have to purposefully hit these players with lightning strikes to free them. If you do not, they just die. There's no saving them. Sometimes you will face the boss at a bad time and the victims will die regardless of the party's ability to free them. Ad phase? Pretty simple. Just kill the adds while handling all the previous mechanics. Too bad the adds all live in the water you need to avoid being shocked by. In phase 3 there will now be a tether. You may remember this from hard mode. In extreme, it hurts a lot more. Do not attack. Every action you take will do heavy damage. One of the two tethered people must Don't immediately go collect three orbs to make it go away. If either of you die, the tether moves to the next player in line. If you both die, two new players will have it. The only way to remove it is three orbs. So you need to, as a whole party, juggle all of this. Making sure there's not too many orbs, but leaving enough for the tanks and then the tether. This is why this fight is so awful to everyone. If even one person steps out of line in raid awareness, you can snowball into an unwittable situation. That round where the tank instant pulled from misunderstanding, the tanks could not get three orbs in time. Eventually the DPS were taking tank busters. 
Then there's also why I insist people should be more aggressive in normal content. Stuff like what got me killed at the very end. I am at C, close enough at least. Anyone with hysteria should be aiming to be at any of the three markers, but even if they aren't at the markers, you should be aiming to hit people with your circles. The black mage here runs away. Even if I didn't have hysteria, the black mage should have stayed still. Hitting people with your avoidable AoEs is rarely, if ever, a problem in normal content, and this fight explicitly requires it. The problem is hitting people with multiple AoEs. If four players are getting hit with targeted AoEs, there's no difference if all eight no. players stand in these targeted AoEs and also take the damage. If the damage is severe enough, the healers are going to do AoE healing on four targets. Eight players taking damage as a result has no drawback without there being some sort of added context. And good god, I'm very much not used to Astro anymore. Do not take this gameplay as a show of what you should do. Like I said, I never cleared this on even DPS. I never healed this, this ever. This so so many times I used Swift so Cast close. when I knew I should be holding it. Other times I was going for light speed and hit the wrong button. And I thought Sinistry was a Heaven's Word skill? Stop panicking and look at your hotbars, dude! That is my first mentor clear. Alright, I'm mentally done already. We go again. Why is my phone ringing? I don't care who you are, you spam. I don't have your number. Ooh. Well, this black mage knows how to do a rotation. I've never seen someone do this. What are they doing? You know, I was partly doing this to, like, get footage for a video. Oh, no. Okay, then. I was gonna use this uh, for footage for, like, Astrologian, Astrologian, and Scholar, since I normally don't play them, but I probably should've just did it the normal way. Because I'm not really getting any footage out of this. It's easy stuff. Well. Easy stuff and Rama. Ramu. He's not easy, but he's less... Able to show what I'm intending to show. I can actually play the video game now! Yay! Oh, I have gravity. I should use gravity. Am I supposed to not give you advice because you're leveling only? The fact you are leveling Black Mage is literally the exact reason why I should be giving advice. Why is that your response? Zelfatol. Oh, it's been a while. Hello. This tank doesn't know wall to walling. Time to see if I can teach them how to wall to wall. I mean, they've added markers, but it otherwise seems to be the exact same boss fight. Oh, wait, you don't break these anymore. Okay, so these these boats, you used to have to break these. They weren't just ads. You had to break the boats. Like, this was just three ads. There should be a fourth enemy for the boat itself. I told you don't run away, and you're running away into the enemy AoE! Oh boy, I just realized my last recording is tarnished, because I had always on mic on, so the pure recording has my voice too, so... Uh, if the first part of this video seemed, uh... Not well audio balanced and all that, that's why. So anyway, let's make things a lot worse with Scholar! That sounds like fun, right? Oh my god, my bar is all the way up there. <sighs> I hate this part. Uh, So if you didn't know, there's a glitch with all the different UI elements in the game. The game can only save like 30 elements. And so because there's so many jobs and so many different gauges, like five different PvP gauges to keep track of. There's the diadem, uh, bazooka. They start to reset after a while. I don't like Scholar. I don't hide this fact. 
I don't even have a portrait set up for it. I haven't even tried, like... You could tell for Astro I at least tried to do something. Sure, that works. Alright, sure. So, uh... Are you, are, you, are you that dead? Hello? Please? Sir? Please, sir? My tank is a pugilist. And me, also. Okay, how are we this far in without getting a new tank? There we go! <laughs> what?! <laughs> I would like again to point out that that guy is still waiting in their penalty queue because you get a 30 minute penalty for leaving a duty as the first, like just being the first person to leave prematurely. We cleared that in 10 minutes still just about. They abandoned us and we still cleared way ahead of schedule. Okay, so I mentioned this in the one video. This is a strat you can do. Normally this marshal will rush the princess and then start healing it. Just run up to it. Congrats. No heal. It barely does any damage. And you prevent that entire mechanic from ever being a thing. Assuming your tank doesn't, like, get ahead of themselves and just go, like, Oh, there's an ad! I must grab ad! Because... Yeah, when you're learning, you, know, you don't know the difference of, Okay, this is an ad I don't want to grab. I don't want to care about this one. Maybe just don't. That was easy. Yeah, you could skip both of those rooms. Uh. Now that the enemies don't give EXP, it's only bosses that give EXP. Those rooms where you just click to continue, you could just skip. It broadly depends on the tank being able to get through. You'll see that I attacked the Condor just to get it off the DPS so they could get through. I know how to get through when it's just one enemy attacking me. There it is. That was the 500th run I've done for Mender Roulette. So there isn't just the Astro B, Astro whatever for doing runs. This first one is the Mentor of Mentors title, which is hardly that much of a title. That's kind of eh. That, that's a dumb title. There's so many cooler titles, like the Alpha Legend. But the next reward, we have to double our number of times in there to get... This actually is a good reason. Like, this is a nice monocle. Like, anyone who does the 1,000, I would say actually, like, you would have a point, honestly. This, this here, this is a better reward than the mount. I've never seen anyone use this monocle in specific. So it's like, this is the better reward... But nobody uses it. I think that says a lot, personally. One more. Oh, come on. Why did I... Uh, what now? Remember when you used to go over there and had to plant the bombs and all that? There was a very good way to get through it, like, really quickly. Easy run, but... I mean... That's just how it goes. Anyway, run 501. Not including failures. Oh boy. Alright, this is a babysitting run. Five of all stacks. I, f I wasn't paying attention to the order. I was not paying attention to the order. He had so many Voln stacks, I stopped paying attention to the fight. 
Oh dear. Alright, I'm afraid how this is gonna go. Alright, we're gonna get three enemies. Yep. And there it is, 500 runs, including all those runs from back in the day. The first milestone for this series is only about 60 runs in. We have such a long, long way to go, but I'm at least happy to have gotten my first ever Ramu clear. I could tell you so many stories about runs of that. I tried so hard so many times to direct people, but could only get so far. The irony is the Gila clear instead of anything else. I also have no idea how this was so few runs, but so much footage. A lot of it was in between stuff, talking plans, but hey, after that Ramu, I deserved it. Take care and may the power of Anne and Hogsley waste to your enemies.